Hello, and welcome back to Indispection. This week, we're going to be talking about a game called Fortune Summoners, a game developed by Lizsoft and released by Carpe Fulga. Now, you might be asking what Carpe Fulga is. Well, they're a localization company. What this means is that they take an already developed game and work very closely with the developers so as to translate the games and ensure that they keep all of the original context and meaning, which may be lost within a literal translation. With Carpe Fulga working very closely with Japanese developers, they also work hard to ensure that these games are appropriate within a Western culture. In some cases, this can be as little as discreetly putting some additional clothing on characters. It can also mean cutting any scenes which may be considered as inappropriate for a Western culture. At current, Carpe Fulga have released three Japanese games, each of which we will look into in this episode. So first off, Fortune Summoners. What is Fortune Summoners? It's the newest game to be released by Carpe Fulga, and in my opinion, the best game Carpe Fulga has released to date. Initially, you start by playing a young girl named Arch, whose family have just opened up an item shop, which I guess you could just call a general store. Arch starts out as a melee sword character, who is a bit of a tomboy. Having just moved to a new town, Arch is about to enrol at a new school. However, this isn't any old school. This is a magic school. Now, Arch, having never studied magic before, is naturally very excited. However, she soon finds out that she cannot begin to practice just yet. This leads her to begin to make friends in her class. She becomes friendly with a girl named Sana, who will soon become the second addition to your party. Sana's abilities all revolve around water, ice and healing, making her the mage support of your party. Finally, you gain Stella as an addition to your party. Her role is the mage nuke, and as expected, she's focused around fire magic. Arch does begin to obtain magical capabilities much later on into the game, and eventually only actually picks up two. So let's talk about some of the technicalities in this game. Graphics-wise, I love the look of Fortune Summoners. The cute, simple anime sprites are a great representation of the characters, with more in-depth character art coming through in the speech text. The scenery graphics also fit right in with the art style, with textures used feeling soft enough to still have that anime feel to them. The audio fits well, with very few vocals. The background audio really helps to set the tone within the game, with very calming music in the town and loud, fast-paced, dramatic music in battles and dungeons. One thing I didn't like with Fortune Summoners was some of the control aspects. The gravity and jump feels just too fast and the gravity almost too weak. The fact that a small girl can jump the height of a two-storey building doesn't quite sit right with me. Secondly, the movement feels somewhat too fast. When trying to enter doors in dungeons, often you will need to slow early or move back a bit to get exactly where you need to be. Making this a little easier to control would, in my opinion, benefit the game a lot. However, the controls within battle feel very comfortable. Understanding the controls in battle is very easy to grasp. Each character uses the same, or very similar controls, with some simple controls dedicated to party formation and quick heal, so it's very easy to have your characters defend at the right times. Swapping between characters in the party is also very easy to do, and ensures you can always use the right character to heal at the right time, it ensures you can always use the right character to damage at the right time, it ensures that you always have the right character available to you. Overall, I found Fortune Summoners to be an amazing game, with beautiful graphics, extremely interesting storyline and gameplay, and actually, fairly simple controls too. The next game we'll discuss is the first game released by Carpe Fulga, developed by Easy Game Station, called Racketeer. This game has once again, really cute graphics, and again, has the very cute anime sprite style. Reketeer has brilliant and interesting gameplay. 
In this game, you play a young girl who opens an item shop in an attempt to keep her home and pay off her father's debt. However, she can't obtain the items for her own shop. She needs the help of some adventurers at the Adventurers Guild. With the help of the adventurers, she can then go to the nearby dungeons and gather items to sell in her shop. Combined with this, she can then sell the items she found back to the adventurers from her shop. Any weapons and armour she sells to the adventurers are then upgrades to their items that they can use around the dungeons. So in this game, you get to play both aspects. You get given a day and around the day, each thing you do will take up a certain amount of time slots. You get four time slots a day, entering a dungeon will take two and opening your store will take one. So, given that there's the adventurers, you can then go into the dungeons and play them and go through collecting all of the loot for her shop. However, if you die, you're only allowed to take one item back with you. Since hiring adventurers can be costly, it's important that you make sure not to die in the dungeons. One thing this game is lacking is a jump feature, which can make it a little more difficult to avoid mobs in the dungeons. However, the rest of the controls do feel really nice and they're very easy to grasp hold of. They also work extremely well with the keyboard. One thing which I did really enjoy was the fact that the dungeons are completely randomised, which means that if you die or need to redo a part of the dungeon to get a certain item for an order for someone, it's not going to feel too samey. With the two aspects of gameplay and the use of the dungeons to claim loot combined with the focus on selling items to keep the store running, it makes for an interesting approach to combining both aspects of story and gameplay. Combined with the randomised dungeons, this game almost reminds me of the old game Dark Cloud. So let's move on to talk about the final game published by Carpe Fulga and once again released by Easy Game Station. This game, Chantelise. This is Carpe Fulga's second game. Now, of the three games, Chantelise has to be my least favourite. It just doesn't seem to fit together quite as well as the other two. The story behind Chantelise is fairly interesting, and you're given the task of finding a witch so as to reverse a curse put on your sister, which turned her into a fairy. First off, the art style. Now, the cute anime style is nice and fits well with our other games. Assets have been reused, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. What it means is that, although it's fairly confusing how some of the assets namely picks, which are used in Chantelise to cast magic, and in Racketeer are used as XP. Although some are used slightly differently sometimes, it's also nice to see some familiar items sometimes, so as to know what they do. On the other hand, the textures used in the scenery don't sync well with the anime character styles in my opinion. The textures feel like they're trying to be realistic in style, completely the opposite of the character sprites, Personally, I'd have liked them to stick to one style and have both the scenery and the characters looking more similar. As for the controls, I'd really recommend the use of a gamepad. Now, personally, I don't like using them, but the controls are extremely hard to master on the keyboard. Overall, I very highly rate the games released by Carpe Fulga, and I highly suggest you give them a try. But honestly, I wouldn't start with Chantelise, and if I could say start with any of them, it would probably be Fortune Summoners. This one just seemed to have the most interesting gameplay for me, and the controls also felt very nice too. Combined with the brilliant art styles, not much in this game actually felt wrong, and even though the gravity and movement speed felt slightly off, these were only minor things considering how the rest of the game plays.